Ever since I heard about your hateful act, I've been thinking about you, trying to picture you, to determine your age and your motives. Today I want to talk to you, not as a religious leader or a public official, for I am neither, but simply as someone deeply interested in the history of anti-Judaism and anti-Semitism. Since I was told in advance that there would be no official Catholic voice here today, I will put my remarks in the Catholic framework since Catholicism is my tradition. On the night of November 9th, 1938, in Germany and Austria, swastikas flashed, Torahs were burnt, and 200 Jewish places of worship were shattered. It was the night of broken glass. Seven years later, six million Jews had been murdered by the Nazis. So you understand why we cannot ignore your swastika here in Heritage Park, even if it was only a joke or a dare. Actions have consequences and communities must stand firm against hatred. Roughly 50 years ago, the good Pope John XXIII said this, forgive us for the curse we falsely attach to their name as Jews. Forgive us for crucifying thee a second time in their flesh, for we knew not what we did. This amazing statement set the tone for the Second Vatican Council and for the series of apologies that national Catholic churches and the Vatican itself would offer to the Jews on two counts, for their silence during the Holocaust itself and for whatever, for whatever role was played in preparing the Holocaust by 2,000 years of anti-Judaism embedded in the heart of Catholicism. As true apologies, these statements were not simply expressions of regret for what happened in the past, but sincere commitments to building a new relationship with Jewish people in the future. Most remarkably, in the year 2000, more than 170 Jewish scholars representing all branches of Judaism issued a statement called Dabru Emet, Hebrew for to speak the truth, which calls on Jewish people to relinquish their fears of Christianity and to acknowledge church efforts since the Holocaust to amend the Christian teaching about Judaism. Although admitting that without the long history of Christian anti-Judaism and Christian violence against Jews, Nazi ideology could never have taken hold, nor could it have been carried out, the document explicitly states that Nazism was not a Christian phenomenon, it was not an inevitable outcome of Christianity. So you can see that the Catholic Church has moved as far as possible away from the swastika and what it represents, and that the Jewish world has formally acknowledged this new beginning in Judeo-Christian relations. With your swastika here in Heritage Park, you stand isolated, not only from Jewish people, but from the very heart of contemporary Christianity. Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel has written this sentence. Since Auschwitz and Hiroshima, the mark of Cain has overshadowed the image of God on the face of man. Nothing in my own psyche visually represents the mark of Cain more than the swastika. I don't believe that you were aware of most of these things when you did what you did here but we want you to know what this symbol means to others and why it is harmful and why it is hurtful. While everyone present today protests against what you did here, no one hates you. We refuse to return hatred for hatred. Amen. Furthermore, we do not believe that one misguided hateful act makes a hateful person. Think about what we have said here today. Listen to our side of the story. Liberate yourself from the prison of hatred. My personal goal in coming here today is to inform you with the hope that it will transform you. I await the miracle of your repentance. We all want to welcome you into our community. Amen. James Baldwin has written that hatred is the fear of being loved. 
how right this sounds to me. Hell is not other people. It is the hatred of other people, which itself is nothing other than self-loathing projected outward. Listen carefully to these words of Trappist monk Thomas Merton. They are essential not only for you, but for all of us here today. Our capacity for love is limited. It has to be completed with the capacity to be loved, to accept love from others, to want to be loved by others, to admit our loneliness, and to live with our loneliness because everyone is lonely. Thank you. Amen.